Hello folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Moshix and today uh, we're going to look into MBS uh, catalog management. But before I go into that, I just want to respond to some of the people who have um, uh, uh, made comments in my latest uh, video on the quality of my audio. And I fully agree uh, with the person who made the comment. The, uh, the audio quality could be better, but um, please bear in mind that I'm producing these videos uh, on the go. I travel almost all the time. Uh, that's just my, that's how just my professional life is. I'm, I'm constantly traveling. Uh, I may be only staying two, three days a month at home, really. And I haven't been at home at all in the last two months. Um, so uh, I have to record these videos with uh, the kind of equipment that I can bring with me in my backpack, which is a very flat uh, Chinese um, microphone um, and then I work with my uh, Intel Skull Canyon um, uh, as my video editing machine uh, that's the one you see here on the screen um, because it's it's fast enough it has uh, let me see here uh, uh, the kind of perform it has I think uh, about four uh, cores and um, I think 16 or 32 gigabyte of memory. So that that's this this machine is small enough for me to carry around, and the microphone is flat and small enough for me to put in the backpack. I'll try to do as best as I can in the video editing with uh, improving the audio. But uh, please bear with me. Uh, I'm not that great with video editing and audio, all that kind of stuff. I'm just I'm just a computer geek, if you want, um, and. Uh, and I'll be focusing on that. Anyway, so let's get started. So today we're going to be discussing um, catalog management. Now, why? Uh, what is a catalog and uh, why is it important to know about it? So if you go, let's just go into, um, into uh, 3.4 here, data set list, and let's take any, any um, volume. This is the the DASTY, and as you know, DASTY contains data sets. Now, how is it that when we search for something, um, let's say Sys1 Parmlib, right? Very important data set. We just looked at this in my previous video released yesterday. Um, how is it that MBS knows how to find it and knows that it's on volume MBS REST? I mean, in TK4, we have probably close to 30 volumes. Um, how does it know to find it there? Well, uh, if you think about Unix or Linux, for instance, uh, when you type, um, you know, uh, when you want to show the content of ETC hosts, for instance, um, to do that, you have to tell it exactly where the location is. You have to say it's on the ETC, it's in the subdirectory ETC, and it's called the file is called hosts, and then it knows how to find it. You do you do not need to tell it on which disk device. ETC host resides because uh, that's resolved in Unix through at mount time. Whenever you mount a, a disk device, um, the uh, the the file system appends uh, the content there to a certain subdirectory, and so if you just mention the subdirectory, it will know it's on that disk. In in um, in MBS, it's a little different. Uh, MBS knows how to find data sets by name because it has something called the catalog. And the catalog, think of it like almost like a, an index um, card system uh, that knows that you know certain names are in certain volumes. And anytime you create a, a new disk, uh, very often uh, there's going to be a content system or an index card management for that disk. And, and that's what we saw here when I do um, MBS resident here, this volume, all the way at the bottom, you see this always is very strange names, Z9999. Those are VSAM spaces that contain the catalog of all the data sets on this disk. Now, every MBS host, every, every uh, mainframe, independent mainframe system uh, or an LPAR, needs to have a master catalog. And uh, the master catalog is the catalog that knows uh, either all data sets that were registered with the catalog or knows where to find all the other catalogs for all the other disks 
uh, that contain that contain uh, indices to other data sets. So it's a little complicated if you hear it like this, and probably a a diagram would serve better here. But uh, when you create a data set, um, and we can actually do this here. So let's go 3.2, let's create a data set, allocate new data set, we're gonna call it Moshix. Oops, Moshix, again, Moshix, YouTube. Okay, and now let's uh, go allocate it. Let's go to fixed block, 80, uh, I don't know what kind of disk device this is, but uh, let's make it 800, volume, pop 000, and you make it uh, two cylinders and one extent and uh, 50 directory blocks. Very typical, uh, that's the okay. thing. So we just created it, and now how, if I only type Moshix, then 3.4 already returns this um, this data set. It knows it's in pub 00, zero as we indicated, right? Because we told it to put it there. Now, when in this case, when we created this data set through TSO, and obviously you can also do it uh, through a batch utility, it was automatically added to the catalog. Um, now, what we can do is look at this. I can press U here to uncatalog, means removing it from the catalog. Data set uncatalog. Now let's go back and let's search for it. You see, no data sets found. Um, and that's because Moshix is not cataloged anywhere. Now, cataloging doesn't actually mean creating it. So Moshix still exists. And in fact, I can retrieve it if I put in here pub 000. It will go to the disk, look at the catalog on that disk, and find that there is a data set called Moshix, and then it presents it to me. Okay, and this sign here is how RFE, the productivity tool here, to tells us that it's not cataloged um, anywhere. So if we want to, we can still find the data set by just indicating it where it is. Um, and, um, but if we don't indicate where it is, we cannot find it. So one funny outcome out of this is that I can actually go and create this again, allocate, uh, and I put it in 001, the exact same data set with the exact same name and specifications. Okay, I make it again, three cylinders, 50 uh, directory blocks. And now it was created and automatically cataloged in our case. And I'm not uncataloging right now, but look what happens. If I say Moshix, now it finds the one on uh, volume pub 001, which is the one we just this uh, four seconds ago created. Uh, however, um, now you have in, in our mainframe system throughout our DASDs, we now have two identical um, data sets with the same name, but residing in different volumes. And that's perfectly fine and legal. However, uh, if you just search by name, only the one that's cataloged will show up. So uh, if you want to get to the one that's not catalog, as I said before, we do like this, and then we find this one on pub, on pub 000. So that's how cataloging works. Now, um, all this is, is cataloged in the master catalog. Um, and the problem with the master catalog is if you have many, many disk devices, the catalog will start to be very, very active. And in fact, um, it could become a bottleneck performance for the whole system. And that's why you don't really want to have a lot of stuff in the catalog. Also, because in, I still remember in the early days of the catalog, 30, you know, almost 40 years ago, there were bugs in the catalog handling of MBS. And if the catalog got corrupted, you, you know, it would be a lot of work to rebuild the catalog, uh, finding all the data sets and all the disk devices. I worked at a place uh, 35 years ago that had hundreds of DASTA devices, hundreds. Um, and so it would be almost an impossible work, uh, amount of work to restore a catalog for just looking at each individual DASTA device. So there, that's why you want, you want to keep um, the master catalog, which is the, the system catalog, 
uh, as light as possible for performance reasons and for safety reasons um, and for availability reasons and, and maintainability reasons. And, and so that's why there is a notion of sub-catalogs, meaning catalogs that are responsible for certain parts of the environment only or certain disks only or certain type of DAS, the, uh, data sets only so that y the, all the search is done in those user catalogs and the master catalogs is kept lean and clean. Um, so, um, and, and that's why in real mainframe shops, I mean the ones that use real hardware, not emulated hardware like I'm doing here, it is almost unthinkable to have one master catalog containing everything. Typically, uh, computer uh, mainframe shops they split user catalogs, that's how the sub-catalogs are called, user catalogs, in either by function, let's say payroll, or uh, production, or development, or test, or finance, um, so, um, so that all data sets pertaining to that kind of application environment will be under one user catalog. The other way to do it is by disk device. So every disk device has its own user catalog. Since I do very little actual pro development for for product for production on the mainframe, actually none, to be honest. Uh, I've done some in the past, just wrote some of my own applications for my own use, but I really just do mostly uh, testing, etc. That's why um, I prefer to have user catalogs on each DASD or in each uh, disk device. So how do we do that? Um, so we saw now. Uh, first of all, let's go delete this thing here so that it doesn't hang around. Um, and then let's delete the other one also. Oops. And that's also deleted. So, okay. So we cleaned up here. Uh, this is, by the way, um, the freshly downloaded copy of MBS uh, 3.8 TK4 Update 8 that I used for my previous video on, uh, on Sys1 Parmlib explanation. And so, um, um, I'm used, still using the same image here. What I did though in, in between is I added a couple of disk devices. Uh, how do we find those? So we can go 3.1, uh, 3.4, let's see, this is one Parmlib. And at the bottom of Parmlib there is a um, VAT list, this member here. And as you can see here, I added two disk devices, 3350s, both of them. One is called Moshik 00 and one is called Moshik 01. They're empty right now. So Moshik's additional volume zero for playing with user catalogs, user cats. Um, so I just finished this just before I started uh, making this video. Let's see if both these uh, volumes are up and running. Okay, they are, but there's no data set in it. Just for sake, for kicks, let's go make a data set there. Allocate. Uh, Moshix 00, zero. Uh, okay so 3.4 um, Moshix now if everything went right it should show my Moshix additional volume yes MSHX00 zero zero is present and 01 would also work with just two disk devices now what I want to do here is I want that every new data set allocated on this device goes to a user catalog. To that extent, let me first delete this one. Um, let's go and look at this job here. Um, what I did here is I prepared the job. Actually, I didn't prepare myself. I took it from Mosley's website, which is a source of all good things in life, um, and it adapted a little bit. So what we do here with this job is we do three things and the same job. We by the way, all user catalogs and master catalogs, I should have said at the beginning, are vSAM datasets, okay? If you don't know what vSAM is, now would be a good time to stop the video, uh, break out your browser and do a wiki vSAM because uh, it's, it, it would be too much to explain what a vSAM um, database almost uh, is. Um, and so you should read up on it a bit. And then, and then once you've read up uh, on wiki and vSAM, um, Get back here so you have a little bit more notion. So every catalog with the master or any user catalog is in reality vSAM. Anytime you talk vSAM, you're talking about the vSAM utility, ICKDSF, um, which is the utility we use in batch to allocate, modify, change, 
uh, look into vSAN datasets. Okay, so whenever you see you, you think vSAN, always think immediately ICK DSF. At least that's how I do it. Um, so then we uh, supply here two dataset definition for this two volumes. Okay, Moshik 00, unit 3350 with this volume serial, and then Moshik 01 with this volume serial. So we can refer to that in the in the language, in the vSAM uh, uh, programming language. vSAM has its own language, so you can interact with it in a, in a, in a batch job. So this user catalog will contain, so we're creating a new catalog, define user catalog, as you can see here, will contain non vSAM data sets that reside on volume MSH00. So the organization that I want to have is MSHX00 is only going to contain normal data sets of any kind, um, sequential, partitioned, whatever. And then MSHX01 will contain some vSAM data sets itself. So I want to, uh, be, we want to use vSAM as a database and also normal uh, data sets. So, uh, so how do we do that? We define a user catalog called U, UC user catalog MSHX00 on volume MSHX00. And it takes the definition from this line here. Uh, we'll make it, let's say, seven cylinders big and buffer space space 8192 so that's one here it defines a catalog then we create an alias um, so that all data sets with a high level qualifier of mshx00 will be automatically cataloged in this user catalog so i can create anywhere in the system in my, in my mainframe I can, I can allocate a new data set called mshx00 dot something dot something and if it rec sees that name then the master catalog knows that it needs to allocate, it needs to tell the user catalog to make an entry within this user catalog that we define here. Okay, um, so here it is. So we say if anything called it's called MSHX00 dot something, put it here. Relate user catalog MSHX00. Then this user catalog will contain non vSAM and vSAM objects. So now we go to the second volume I have. Um, and we'll say that there's a user catalog called user catalog MSHX01 on this volume, 01, that's the second volume, uh, with 30 cylinders, uh, that's a little bit big, so let's make it 12 cylinders, and it's gonna have some data cylinders and some index cylinders, okay? So let's make it um, six and six. So now we are, this is the second catalog we're allocating, um, and then finally, an alias is defined so that all data sets and vSAM objects with the high level qualifier of MSHX01 will be cataloged in user catalog, user catalog MSH01. Okay, end of the job. So let's execute this job and see what happens. So before we execute it, actually, um, there is one more thing that I just noticed uh, was wrong. Uh, I was still had a uh, disk initialization, uh, CKDSF uh, here, but obviously it should be ID cams uh, because ID cams is is what drives uh, vSAM. Um, so I had it wrong here the whole time. Anyway, so uh, now this should be able to run. Uh, let's save it and uh, let's give it E so I know what it is and let's run it. Job six, um, let's go pick it up. Okay, uh, this seems to have gone well. Uh, return code zero. Let's see what ID cams tells us. ID cams user catalog, okay. Uh, this was done, this was done. Okay, so now we have uh, this user catalog and one way to test it is if you allocate a, a data set called MSHX000 and then it should automatically put it uh, in user catalog UCMSHX00. Um, so to do that, let's go here and we call it, uh, yeah, oh, actually 3.2. Allocate and we'll call it MSH x00 YouTube okay MSHX00 and it's going to be FB 
logical record length uh, 2080, 800, didn't say nothing here, 2, 1, 10. Um, and that's data set, that data set is created. Let's see where it put it, MSHX00. Um, it put it on pub, a zero, public 10, but um, it is um, in the uh, user catalog um, for MSHX0, UC MSHX00. Uh, how, how do we do that? How do we know for sure? Well, for that purpose, we will have to go and create a small utility to dump uh, the contents, or list the contents, as it's called, of the user catalog. And um, let's go uh, get this utility. Uh, mostly has it um, in his vSAM tutorial that I always wanted to go and read. Uh, that never had the opportunity to to do um, so this is a define let's do a list define define let's see where do we have a list um, doesn't have a list example nope um, there's plenty of other examples, but not a list, I think. Repro, the, the verb is list, and so we'll see it easy if it's, okay. Okay, list cat command. Um, okay, so. We can take this and create a list. Um, so first, let's go here. Copy members. Copy. Um, let's see what it's called first. UCAT. Okay. So three dot three. Let's copy that. Uh, UCAT. Uh, I heard one test. CMTL copy to this cat. Um, okay, and then we copy uh, ASM this cat to CMTL. Yeah. Okay, so now we can go edit that one and delete from here all the way down. Um, we we'll have to end the system here properly, and then we do oh, actually. This cat uh, of UC MSHX00. That's the one we wanted to know if it contains now the catalog entry for the dataset MSHX00.youtube.cntl. Uh, this entry again here MSHX00. Okay, MSHX. Okay, so this should work. Um, let's put an L here for list, so we know which one it is. It's held output. Um, let's submit it. And uh, let's go to 3.8 and look at the output. Uh, there was a return code of 8. Uh, let's see why. So, um, this is the master catalog, okay? And of course it contains the alias for MSHX0001 because that's what we just created. Um, and uh, here is our own UC mass, uh, user catalog MSH. Oh, 
MS. Yeah, I got it wrong here. Sorry, guys. Uh, MS. X. Okay, let's do this again. Let's do M so it's easy to keep apart. Um, one of the reasons uh, this is fun for me making these videos is that I never know what the outcome is, uh, as I was saying before, and uh, that's where fun is for me. Okay, here it is, so zero, zero. You always want to check for zero return code. Um, and let's see what it found. Okay, here it is. So in user catalog MSH00, we have now this data set, non vSAN data set, MSH X YouTube CMTL. So it was properly allocated in the, in the correct user catalog. Uh, we could also do it so that it forces all MSH X00 high level qualifier data sets to be on MSH X00. Uh, that also can be done, and, uh, but that's storage management. That's not strictly speaking catalog management. So we'll do it in a separate session. Um, yeah. So uh, this kind of shows um, how to deal with user catalogs. So the main takeaway is you don't put everything in the master catalog. Um, this one here, because this is the master catalog in our TK4. Because by doing that, you overload it and slow down performance. And so uh, it's better to allocate it, to allocate user catalogs. And the way I do it usually is per storage device, per TASTY. Um, but there's other ways to do it. It's important to always think of the layout. And I just saw, I think, something here in Jay Mosty's website where it shows how these things relate to each other. Um, that wasn't it. Yeah. So that will be a typical catalog structure for for a well thought out uh, mainframe shop. You have the master catalog, with, in which in our case, again, is, um, is this one, the mass cat. Uh, and then you have user catalogs. And then the user catalogs um, have sub-allocated clusters so you can expand. Um, and this would be, for instance, you know, one DASTY or one project. This could be finance, this could be payroll. Um, and that's how you um, make sure that, you know, if you only, if you lose this one, you're still gonna find um, all the data set and VSAM entries and all the other ones. So, but if you put everything in the master like this is gone, you, you know, you, you've lost everything. Um, now the one thing to say is that in what if you put a user catalog or a catalog on a disk, uh, that catalog owns the disk, and and the and the catalog needs to be the beginning of the disk, and so by being at the very first vSAN um, data set on the disk, it makes that user catalog own the disk, and it needs to be the very first item on that disk. Uh, so that's why you want to create the user catalogs at the beginning when the disk is still empty before you populate them with data. Um, so uh, this is user catalog. What this uh, particular video is not about is how to work with vSAM. I'm going to make a separate video for that, how to work with vSAM. Um, obviously user catalogs use vSAM, but that wasn't always the case. Before vSAM came along around, I think, 74, um, the catalogs used to be called, I think, ICS uh, or OCS, Operating Catalog um, Services or something like that. Um, and, then, uh, and then vSAM became the structure for catalogs. And then as of OS 390, I think 2.10 or so, and ZOS, they have something called ICF, Integrated Catalog Facility, which is yet another way to handle catalogs. So it's not... Uh, it's not with uh, this vSAM structure anymore. They have a different way to do it, um, but uh, they still be, uh, they're still able to read disks with a vSAM catalog, user catalog on it, so that, that will continue to work. Um, and you still run the same utilities to uh, control catalogs. So um, that's a very brief overview of uh, user catalogs and, ca and master catalog. Uh, always, you know, the main the main thing is to think uh, well how you want to structure your data on your disks and how you're gonna um, define user catalogs for that data. So you only, um, you should ideally never have two different kinds of data with the same name 
or um, two names for the same data. Um, that will kind of confuse things. And so uh, that's why it's important to think this things out properly. That's it for today. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this uh, video so you can get notifications of future videos. And if you like this particular video, press on the thumbs up button. Uh, that always makes me happy and motivates me to do more. And have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.